down in 1979. Take it. Cool kids never had the time. Take it. Only right up off the street. You and I should meet. Take it. June bug skipping like a stone. Lights pointing at the dawn. Take it. We were sure never seeing it to it all. We don't even care. Rest the ship of blues. There yeah, we don't know just where our bones will rest to die. Forgotten end of soul to the earth below. What we have in store Morphine City slipping to And I see We don't need Von care As restless as we are We don't know The land of a thousand Gets and pulls so many villains in this show to the lights to the towns below fast to them the speed the sound fast to them we thought we'd go beneath the sound Never knew the rules. Take it. Hung down with those freaks and ghouls. Take it. No apologies now being made. And I know you better than we don't even care. Shake these zipper blues. We don't. Where our bones will rest to dust, I guess. Forgotten end of zone to the earth below. Without enough to eat, who am I to be blind? 
to the dark to see their needs. A summer's disregard, broken by the top, and a warm their soul. They follow each other on the wind, you know. Cause the guy nowhere to go. Why I want you to know. I'm starting with the man in the mirror. I'm asking him to change his ways. Yeah. No message could have been any clearer. Wanna make a world better place. Take a look at yourself and make that change. Da -na -na. I've been a victim of a selfish kind of love. It's time that I realized there was someone with no hope without a nickel to loan. Or could it be really me pretending that I just now see it? Yeah. Willow's deeply scarred, somebody's broken heart, and I watched our dream. Follow each other on the wind you see. Cause they got nowhere to be. That's why I'm starting with me. I'm starting with the man in the mirror. I'm asking him to change his ways. Oh, no message could have been any clearer. Wanna make a world better place? Take a look at yourself. Make the change, gotta get it right. For you got the time, you got to, you got to go and change your mind. Change, yeah. Ooh. Gotta make that change, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, thank y'all for hanging out with us all season long. My name is Ben Hammond. Have a great show. I'll see y'all next time. It's SketchUp's 3D Base Camp Fireside Chat Series. Here's the lay of the land before we get started. If you run into choppy video or sound, click Get Audio Video Help down here and enable Compatibility Mode. You'll end up with a slight delay, but a buttery, smooth stream. You can participate over on this side by asking our guest a question, answering the occasional poll, or just joining in on the chat. And in the middle, you'll see relevant links that'll change as our show goes along. Our guest today is feature film art director, Luke Whitelock. And now, your hosts, Aaron Dietzen and Tori Hassan. Awesome. Well, welcome to episode eight 
of the Fireside Chat Season 2. This is our last time we will be taking handfuls of education and heaps of entertainment and squashing them together into a SketchUp-shaped mold and delivering you a weekly webinar series that you can find nowhere else. It's true. We got to the end of the season a little sooner than I was ready for, but it, it has been a great summer. Yeah, it's it's uh, and you're you're like you're you're basically at this point episodes you're professional. Yep. So you got that going. I'm for here. You. I, I passed the test. I made it. <laughs> and of course, because instead of doing it in order and getting feedback from a real pro at the beginning, we waited until our last episode to talk to somebody who actually knows what they're doing when it comes to film and video design. <laughs> Because right. why not? <laughs> yeah, wait till the end. Wait, and then now we can see if we did it right on our own. And then we can wear that as a badge of honor. So we can, we um, can compare. <laughs> that's right. We Luke Whitelock's going to be on in a few minutes. And he has done some amazing films. I mean, like too many to list. But what we're going to do is we're going to throw up a poll of his top six or so. Or what, what we thought were his top six. Um, a wide variety of different types type of movies that he worked on. We're going to put those in the poll. And we'd love to hear which one of those is your favorites. And while you do yes. that, uh, Tori's going to tell us a little bit about Luke. I am. And for some extra credit, if anybody feels like looking up his IMDb page, feel free to go and tell us what your favorite movie is if we missed it in the poll. Luke is an amazing, in my opinion, and probably many others, art <laughs> film director. And he's joining us today live from the UK. Luke has been working with SketchUp for 15 years now, and he uses both it and layout to complete all of his construction drawings. Uh, you'll realize while you're going through the poll that he has completed work on films for Marvel, Disney, and Universal, many of which are big name films that you have likely seen a number of times. And so I am very excited today to, as he is going to be taking us through his workflow for how he uses components in SketchUp to help him design sets. That's going to be fun. That's it's a, uh, it's a pretty, it's a pretty, uh, well, it's good. You'll see. Yeah. And that's why you're here. You're going to see it. I don't have to talk it up anymore. You've made it. <laughs> it's going to be good. You are going to see it. So Should just we check to, out to the poll review. This. So we did throw another, we, we had a secret poll. There's an Easter egg in this particular episode. Some of you guys found it. We did have a poll up right at the beginning asking how many episodes you've been to. And it looks like, I was not expecting this, we have more people here for their first time in the poll than anyone else. So, which is kind of a surprise. That's pretty good. Although second place is eight. We have a lot of people that have seen the entire season, which is awesome. We're extreme. It's, it's, it's an all or none <laughs> kind of group. All or one. All of you who are here for the first time, make sure you go back and watch the recordings. That's right. Um, but as to the question at hand, uh, Luke Whitelock, your favorite Luke Whitelock movie, um, mm -hmm. looks like Inception's the big one. Guardians of the Galaxy is coming up behind it. But uh, yeah, it's, they're going mm -hmm. back and forth. That's yeah, they're changing a little bit. I mean, I don't think there were any wrong answers on this list, honestly. No. So I, I'm not going to be upset, however it turns out. Which yeah. one's your favorite, Aaron? I, I mean, uh, anybody who watches our live stuff we talk about and knows I'm a Marvel nerd and I just had to pick Endgame. I loved our Guardians of the Galaxy. In fact, well, I mean, I loved all the movies on here. I've seen them all, um, but I had to go with Endgame. You, Tori? You know, this was tough. I have loved all of these movies and seen a few of them more than once. And I am a big Robert Downey Jr. fan. So Avengers and Sherlock Holmes were both up there. But I had to go with Guardians of the Galaxy because I just laughed the entirety of both of those movies. <laughs> that was a great movie. That was that was very funny. I was not expecting it to be as funny as it was. That was. <laughs> that, that, that I think was, that was the thing. I had low expectations and it exceeded uh, them. <laughs> like yes. quite a bit. <laughs> that's the way to do it. High hopes and low expectations. It is. It is. Although shout out to Aladdin because the guy that played Aladdin was a very unknown actor from Toronto. So another Canadian and he did a wonderful job too. Hey, just to, just to do a plug, cause we'll be doing a couple of these, but I wanted to hit it now real quick. We'll do this again, but uh, this is our last fireside chat, but base camp is set up. It is happening 2022 in Vancouver. Um, we'll have, 
I'm sure the chat will we'll put a link to uh, Basecamp website. You can get all the details on it, but think about it, plan for it. Uh, you got just about a year to save up for a ticket. Um, it's going to be great. I know a question came by, do we ever have base camps in any other countries? And our official base camps have always been in the United States, but we do have partners who put on base camps in other countries. So um, we have had them in the UK, in Japan, and um, like a dozen other countries. So they do happen. They are out there. Uh, just probably not right now. We're still we're still figuring out this how to move the about travel thing, the world thing. Yeah. So yeah. Um, yeah. But I would guess that uh, the country you're in or country near you will be having one sometime in the next year or two. So. Mm -hmm. um, well, in the meantime, uh, while you're watching today's presentation, there are a couple of things that you should be looking out for because we have one final prize to give out. That's right. Last time I'm going to get to hear that music. Oh. I got it on my phone, so I it's actually the ringtone for me. So. <laughs> All right, I'm going to have to get that for me. <laughs> I'll send it up. I'm going to set it as your specific ringtone. So that only for sense. you, and then I'll know who Prize it is. time! Yeah. <laughs> All right, so today's prize I'm pretty excited about. This is coming from Luke himself. So our winner today is going to go home with a copy, both of Luke's 10 hour SketchUp course, as well as his sci-fi kit bash for SketchUp, which in pounds, British pounds is $115 value. But everybody who is attending today is also going to get access to a promo code that Luke has made available just for us and all of you viewers. You can go onto his website and buy either of these courses and he's going to give us a promo code that'll give you a 10 pound discount. So thank you so much for that, Luke. Absolutely. And awesome kits. Um, I played with the kit bash kit, awesome components in there. So well worth checking out. It's, it's, it's really good stuff. Yes, for sure. Um, awesome. Well, hey, that's the thing to keep an eye out. And, and I guess at this point, it's time. Let's uh, let's quit doing whatever it is we're doing and get, get Luke up here. So everybody, Luke Whitelock. Hey, Luke. Hey, Luke. Hello. How are you? Awesome. Doing, thank you. Thank you for coming and hanging out with us today. My pleasure. It's been a long time coming. So yeah. Pleased to, pleased to finally be here for the last episode. That's yeah, right. we, Luke's had the entire season to prepare for this, you guys, so I think he was getting a little antsy. You, you say that, but I did all my prep in the last two hours. <laughs> that's efficiency. That's Some would I call that March, I think. That's prepare, right. But, yeah. <laughs> well, we've actually been talking to Luke for a while because we did talk to him about coming to base camp back when there was going to be one in 2020, which, of course, unfortunately did not work out. But uh, yeah. we got you here, so that's something. Yeah. The next best thing. I don't have to get on a plane for this one, so that's good. That's true. It is definitely easier to travel to these. Yes, it is. <laughs> well, so we got a couple of questions for you. The first one I wanted to just, just come right out and ask you. Tori announced you as an art director. Can you tell us a little bit about what it is an art director does? We know you work on films, but uh, let's hear a little more about what that is. Yeah, so an art director um, is, uh, so on, on a film you have a production designer. A uh, production designer works with the director to come up with the look of the film. Um, and that can be, you know, from sets and costumes to, to the color scheme and all that sort of stuff. And then once they have sort of fleshed that out and they're ready to start uh, designing sets and getting sets uh, built, they'll employ the art directors and you normally have three or four or five, depending on the scale of the production. So like the Marvel films, we've probably had four or five. I think on Endgame, there might have been six or seven art directors. And then they basically will be tasked with either one major set and a few small sets or lots of small sets. And they basically, the whole thing is broken down into, you know, packs of different sets the art director will get given a particular one. So for uh, like end, uh, for end game, uh, Infinity War, actually, I was given the, the pod that you can see on the wall up there just behind me. Uh, that was um, uh, just, just, just for me uh, to design. I, I went in and, and, and basically you get given um, concept art, which is kind of like they come up with an idea of what they kind of want something to look like. And then it's my job to then work out how we're going to build it, how we're going to afford 
to, to do it. Um, basically design all the components and uh, do a 3D model and then turn it into, into construction drawings and oversee the build and make sure it's on time for the schedule, ready to shoot um, in the movie. So yeah, that's ba basically that's the crux of it, but there's lots of other things, you know, there's nuance in there as well, which I don't think we've got time to go into. <laughs> <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. 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 I'm kind of curious. So you mentioned that you would normally be one of a number of art directors working on a film. How does that how does that working relationship happen? Is there any overlap or do you all kind of you do your own thing and then you show up and say, this is what my set looks like? Yeah, kind of. Um, each each art director will have um, normally they would have a uh, an assistant art director working with them or a or a draftsman or a junior draftsman. Or, or several, depending on the size of the set. So for something like Maleficent, um, I, I, I did the overall plan elevation of the set, and then I was able to farm out some of the details to some of the junior draftsmen and, and or assistant art directors who would then go and take my model and do a construction drawing for the window or for the door or whatever it was. So it, it filters down. So as I'm doing the overall design and I start going down to the workshops and overseeing the build and things like that, behind me are the juniors basically pumping out the details that then follow so all the flattage gets made first and starts getting erected and while that's going up uh windows and doors will be following behind getting ready to be put in and then the plastering happens and the painting and so it's, it's kind of you're, you're constantly leapfrogging from one uh mode into another so you've got you have to wear many different hats as you sort of navigate uh through the pre-production process but yeah it's good fun it's a good fun job sounds I, like it I, I assume you don't come out of college and just be an art director i mean there's there's a there's a way you work up that ladder i assume but where did how did you start into this before you got up to where you're at now yeah so um i did work experience while i was at university um i managed to get on to harry potter and the prisoner of azkaban i did uh two weeks uh, work experience in the art department there and that that gave me a footing sort of in gave me a few contacts so when I when I graduated and moved to London I sort of remembered or had the had the contact details for some of the art directors there and I would just phone them constantly back back when I started there wasn't a lot of work around it was a lot of it was going abroad at that time so it was a very very much a, a cottage industry at that point so if you if you were in you're in but it was very hard to Mm -hmm. to get in to get your foot in the door um but then you start off basically i started off as a junior uh, well started off as an art department assistant which is basically making coffee and tea making sure the photocopiers are stocked um getting lunch for people you know dog's body type stuff um and then eventually you get given a drawing like i used to pester the uh, the art directors and say can i do a drawing can i do a drawing even though i i, I didn't really have any experience of actually doing drawing because it was all hand drafting at that point mm. and I'd learned how to hand draft but I'd never done it on a film so when the first film I did was a, a thing called uh, Elizabeth uh, the Golden Age it was the sequel to Elizabeth Kate Blanchett film and um, the first drawing I was given by one of the art directors was to do a just a gun rack for the um, the Armada uh, armory and uh, you get given one of those it's terrifying because you look around and everyone's doing these amazing drawings and you think oh my god what am i going to do so you start drawing and and you get it get into it and then find you know and then they give you something like a door handle or a, i remember one of the other first drawings was um uh, some like uh, strap hinges for some doors and all real small details so you know you're not going to be tasked with a full set at this point and then and then a the few jobs later as you build a portfolio you get you were able to jump up to a junior draftsman, which is kind of, you know, entry level drafting for windows and doors um, and slightly bigger detailing. Then you go up to draftsman, sort of got a bit more control. You might get given a little small set, like a little tiny box set room or whatever, or, you know, a two, two walled set. And then you get assistant art director after that which is basically working with the art directors and you're kind of on par, but you're just, you're not quite there yet. And then after, a few more years and you become an art director and i think each stage of the process i probably did two to three jobs which could pat which could be me mean it, anything from 
a year to two or three years basically as it goes up so i've been doing this for 17 years this year um and i was first got my first art directing job on a feature was um maleficent so that was 2018 so yeah so it took 15 14 15 years to get up to art director but it's great because you you know you learn the whole process all the way through and you go you know i can go down to the workshop now i know what everyone's talking about when i'm with with carpenters or when i'm with um uh, engineers or or any any of those guys you know I'm talking about talk or uh you know weight distribution all that sort of stuff whereas as a junior i'd have been like don't know, <laughs> don't know. okay <laughs> So, so, it definitely but, helps when you understand uh, all the steps in the process. Yeah, no, absolutely. And not, you know, I, I've I've been very fortunate that every job that I've done has led on to, you know, like, like getting in with the Marvel stuff and the Harry Potter guys was a real, um, uh, I don't want to say lucky, but it was like you, you know, it's hard work, but it was also very fortunate to be in the position where I heard a, a, an opening was coming up on a Marvel film. I phoned at the right time. Someone was leaving the job as I phoned and they said, great, can you start Monday? And then that turned into seven years with Marvel. So, wow. Um, That's it was, awesome. Uh, yeah. It's just one of those things that, um, had I, had I not phoned him at that particular time, I might've gone off and done other things. So it's, you know, as you were working your way up, through all of those positions and through the different movies, did you ever have a moment that was kind of like, this is my I made it moment? You know, you're, you're no longer just hoping that you're going to get another lucky phone call. It was, this is it. I've, I'm in the big time. Yeah. Guardians of the Galaxy was definitely, um, when we started Guardians of the Galaxy, we just finished Thor 2 and the whole art department, the designer got came in and said, look, I'm going to, go straight onto this other job. It's called Guardians of the Galaxy. Do you all want to come over? And we're like, yeah, yeah, we'll come over with you. And I always remember we got given the treatment and we're all, no, because nobody knew, or we weren't comic book guys really. So no one really knew what Guardians of the Galaxy was. And first thing you notice is a talking tree and a raccoon and you're going, <laughs> what's this? <laughs> is it going to be, what's this? I don't understand this. Is, is anyone going to watch this? Is anyone going to watch this? <laughs> And then I walked on when by the time we'd finished uh, pre-production and the sets were built and things, and we walked on to like, um, it wasn't my set. It was an art director called Tom Brown. He did the, um, the prison set. Um, and that was fully built, three-story prison working cells. All the doors were articulated. And it was just incredible to walk around that set. And that was a real moment of like, this is a big movie. This is like, you know, this is going to be huge. And um, and then they showed us the uh, the uh, visual effects have done a thirty second uh, tease of what Groot and Rocket were going to look like because on set they were just these blue they had a, a stuffed raccoon to, in, in place and the guy uh, the director's brother in a green suit with a tree helmet on and so they did a they did a visual effects thing of. of rocket on his shoulder with the gun fight you know shooting they mm -hmm. threw all the all the money at it and sat everyone down to show us all what it was going to look like and everyone was just like oh my god this is going to be amazing That's so awesome. um yeah it was it i really enjoyed that job that was a good fun job yeah That's awesome cool. well i think tori and i have like five or six questions we'd like to ask each but we don't have time for it unfortunately um Sorry. we need a whole other <laughs> session just to talk yeah. to you yeah, yeah we'll, we'll, we'll come back to it at some point. DM me on Instagram. I'm always happy to answer questions. There we go. <laughs> but instead, so right now we're going to spend a couple of minutes playing a game with you. So we're going to play the game. Sketch up in the stars. <laughs> All right, that's right. So what we're going to do is we're going to play a little game where we are going to play on the fact that you work in Hollywood. Well, okay, you don't. You actually, but you know, mine would. would Hollywood adjacent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you work on major motion pictures, which have stars. So we're going to take a look at some stars in the sky. These stars are going to be lined up representing common SketchUp tools. So I'm going to show you the stars and ask if you can identify and tell me what tool this constellation represents. 
Sound, Sound good? good? I'll give it a go. <laughs> Remember, there are no wrong answers except for the ones that are not right. Okay, here we go. <laughs> So we're hopping here. Here's the first one. So here we have four stars. Um, I can give you a hint if you like. I can, Five I can give stars. You Aaron can't count. <laughs> uh... There's a handful of stars. <laughs> All right. It's the first one, so I'll give you a hint. I'll, I'll give you a, a couple of outlines. So we'll go like this. Oh, okay. you know, it's the arrow. I don't even know what it's called. Is it called That'll work. That's right. <laughs> you've used it so long, you've made up That's your own right. names. Yeah. That's right. Arrow, arrow. Yeah, arrow. Yeah. Um, arrow. Speaking of which, let's, let's look at the next one. Okay, so next one, we've got some more stars. Uh, that's a pencil. Oh, look at that. Didn't even yes. need a hint. <laughs> the pencil or the line tool. That's right. See, you got this. It's easy. All right, we're going to get another easy uh, one. Uh, ooh. Warming you up. Well, that's, either, that's either circle or, or... no, it's going to be circle, isn't it? It's going to be circle. Yeah, it is. It's <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now we're gonna get real. It's gonna get real now. All right. Here we go. It's a little more complicated. This is this is definitely a, a tougher one. Mm. Feel free to help him out in the chat. That's right. He needs this phone a friend option. And you guys can compete with Dave too. Dave is does that orbit? Is that orbit? <laughs> no, no. It's not. Sound effects said no. Hmm. I'm trying to think. <laughs> I've gone completely blank as to <laughs> so I, I use the hotkey shortcut, so I don't actually ever look at them. Uh, you, you've <laughs> got some people in the chat that are trying to help you out. Push pull. Oh, go. that's right. Yes. <laughs> go. Thanks, Push Sean. pull. Okay. All right, we got a couple more. Let's hit this one. All right, this is definitely a, a tougher one, not one that gets used. It's not, not, not the, you know, everyday mm -hmm. one, most likely, but something you probably use. On occasion. Stop. If it helps, I don't think I know what this is either. <laughs> God, no idea. Put, uh, follow <laughs> right. me? No. Let me give you some, me. I'll give you lines then. Oh. That helps at all. Uh, no. Oh. Chicken no. wing. <laughs> <laughs> no clue. Okay. Oh, at this. You do oh. have you do have some help in the in the uh, the comments there. There are a couple tape measure tool. There you go. That was it. <laughs> yeah. All right, last one. Um, all right, this is this is this is this is the last one. So I'll stop okay. saying things. All right, so here we go. One last one. Square. Do some lines. Not square. Uh... Oh. Close. You're <laughs> close. It is actually. Tape? It's the hand tool. So you were close though. <laughs> okay. It was a close I feel one. Like that, was... that one was a trick. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Very good. Good job. You did good. And uh yeah, I would say Nick Nick buzzed you a time or two, but I think you did it. You you made a a, a good effort. You had fun. That was the important part. Thank you. I think that was a passing grade. I think so. <laughs> you showed up. You pass. That's that's yeah. really yeah. our standards are pretty low. They are. Well, now it's time, I think, for us to hand the floor over to you. So a quick reminder to everybody in the audience, if you have a question come up while you're watching Luke's presentation, remember to put it in the ask a question box down at the bottom. If you see a question in there that you want the answer to, remember to upvote it. And make sure you pay attention and listen for that trivia question, which is going to come up again at the end. All right. And with that, we will hand it over to Luke with his presentation, Components in Set Design. Okay. Um, right. Okay. So you can see that. I'm just checking that you can see. Yep. Looks yep. good. Okay. Good, good. Um, so yeah, components in set design. That's my. This is going to be my uh, little tutorial. And so a little bit about me, just very quickly. Uh, I'm a feature film art director. I studied film and animation at the Arts University of Bournemouth, uh, which I uh, specialised in art direction. And I graduated in 2004 with a BA honours degree. Uh, I moved to London after securing work experience in the art department of Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. And for the last 17 years, I've been working in movies and entertainment. And I first used SketchUp 
I first used SketchUp in 2005, and since 2010, I've been using both SketchUp and Layout full-time in my workflow. I now reside just outside of London with my wife and two children, and I'm currently working on Enola Homes 2 for Netflix. So talking about uh, components and how powerful they are within SketchUp and the modeling uh, side of things, um, this was actually on Thor 2. Up until this point, I'd worked predominantly on the board um, in pen pencil drafting, traditional, uh, traditional drafting. Um, and I was asked to do some of the um, floor panels for the skiff, uh, which is Thor's sort of flying boat uh, thing. And um, I thought I'll give it, I'll, I'll try doing it in, in SketchUp because I sort of knew that, you know, components, repeated components, can, you know, it can be quite... Um, uh, beneficial to use um, and this is one of the first drawings I ever did for work in in SketchUp and layout um, and this is just to show you the uh, the importance of uh, components within modeling and you know um, e even even going down to like your if you if you're going to use layout components will make your life so much more easier in terms of making your model light and uh, you, you know you can use it, when you move your model over into layout, um, you don't have any lag, and it, and it really lightens the load if you like. That's the kind of the thing. So Guardians of the Galaxy was another one where um, this was actually the first film I did where I used entirely SketchUp and layout. I didn't touch a pencil at all on that job, and I haven't since really. Um, so this was uh, one of the first things they asked me to do, which was Ronan's birthing chamber. And again, using components, you can see here, as long as you can see my cursor, all of these teeth, uh, we'd like to call them the dartboard teeth. Um, they're all a single component arrayed around the center. So it's all very simple to do. Um, and each uh, other one had a slightly different uh, feel to it, but uh, it was basically two components arrayed around. Um, and they wanted me to, put together an animatic for visual effects so they could work out how to open the chamber. So this is just a very quick sketch thing that I did. Um, and because I was because I had done this and had modeled it, uh, I was able to use the uh, the model to do the, the layout drawing, which was the section through the tank and how Ronan uh, is birthed out of the black goo. Uh, if anyone's seen the film, it's actually we did that in reverse. So he was lying in in the pool and we've gradually filled it up. And in the film, it's run backwards, so it looks like it's draining off of him. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's, again, the components. And again, in, in Guardians, we this is where I kind of realized that, you know, a lot of set design can be, um, well, it's very expensive. So anything you can do to make it cheaper, uh, you know, the construction managers and the, and the producers are gonna love you for. So. We basically had like uh, a pack of um, components, I would say, that uh, ended up becoming uh, plaster, um, real life plaster components like you can see here. So this is all modeled in SketchUp, these panels. And the great thing, you can just populate a model. I did this very quick carcass shape that was based on a um, concept art that I was given. Um, and the, the designer really liked the silhouette of it. So I just kept the shape as he has he liked it and just basically worked out a way to attach as many components to the ply box uh, so you can see here in the exploded view that how everything just sort of just you know sticks onto the side of the box and then it's all plastered and skimmed and painted and it looks amazing and you wouldn't think it was just a, a ply box with uh, a few components stuck to it uh, and then we're just going around. I, I'll jump. I'm jumping forward in time now to uh, Avengers: Infinity War, and this is the pod that I touched on earlier. Um, I just wanted to show this because this again was a, a case in point where components are key. So you can see here, everything here is a is a repeated component, all arrayed around the centre of the tube. And again, just to give you another view, you've got all of these landing gears, and everything is all. Uh, it's all just repeated. So if you if you took a quarter through that circle, through that orb, it would be, you know, four quarters of the same thing. And that keeps the model really light and really easy to use. 
and in the interior as well we were using all these components over and over again just to dress out and make the thing feel really claustrophobic because that was the the key to it <laughs> so um this is just a, a side by side comparison to show the the finished model against the uh the sketchup model and you can see there is very little in it in terms of um difference so they were so true to the model on this um even as far down as these little landing gear things normally you would give this to the prop makers uh and they would make their own sort of version of it but they kind of they've stuck pretty rigidly to what i gave them as a, as a model so i was really pleased about that um and then we're just going to look at the uh maleficent stuff today i'm going to show you how to um model a rose window one of the ones we use in the chapel for uh, maleficent 2. Um, this is one of the column details that we did and just to let you know so like the great thing with components is if it's repeated like this this column there was like 30 of these in the in the in the uh, set but in the model i could do a component which was the whole thing and then inside the component there are many other single components and they're just uh, like um each one is just twisted 30 degrees and stacked and turned around and the it, you'd be amazed at how light that that model was. I think it was like sixty megabytes or something. It was, you know, not Our not not a, right there. Yeah, there you go. So, um, and again, this is uh, anything that repeats, and it doesn't have to be like components. Don't have to be just uh, a single small item. Uh, they can be huge things. If it's repeated, make sure it's a component because it will just save so much energy with your computer and, and uh, the, the size of the file will be kept s small. So even these big arches, every single one of these is a component just repeated on the axis and copied and pasted and flipped. And then that's it. We're done. So shall we get started with the lesson? Uh, yes, thing please. Is, mm -hmm. um, first thing I want to show you is the actual model. So this is the rose window of the chapel. This is what we're going to be modeling today. And I'll show you how I did it uh, in a second. But I just wanted to give you a an overview of the model and the sort of thing that I do in SketchUp. So, oh, just bear with me. I've just got to plug my keyboard in. There we go. Yeah, it's uh, always looking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this was um, this was actually the the great hall, as you see it in the film, and then we revamped it into the chapel. So we added this uh, um, organ loft. And we had some plugs that basically popped out so that this door originally was a was a blank wall and on the on this side i think the uh the original entrance to the hall was up at the rose window end so and this just gives you an idea because if i if i click in to one of these you'll see if i highlight you'll see they're all components on that that edge i think the reason they're not the same on that side is because i uh had to flip um, uh, th there's a reason why I can't remember why, but it's slightly <laughs> it's slightly different that that front one. But everything else is a is a repeated component. If I go into one of the um, columns, you'll see that the the cap is a component, and then all of these are single components. So you're literally, that's all your computer is, is registering when you're doing a component. Um, and you, you know, you can, you can populate the model and people go, oh my God, that's huge. How's, how is your computer able to handle that? You say, well, components, there you go. That's what it does. That's right. <laughs> so um, that would just give you a little flavor of what we're doing. So this is the lesson. Um, I would normally start off with a profile. So this is a, profile that we took from Hampton Court Palace, which is in West London. Um, so it's a Tudor building. And I just basically stole the profile of uh, one of the windows there. And I think we like to use the term inspired by. Yes, I like to use that as well. <laughs> <laughs> so to find the path of the uh, oh, hang on. To find the path of the uh, the model. Uh, sorry, the I basically I used the window that was in I'm trying to give you a heads up here. So these windows in here, I'd already modeled these 
and this profile shape. So I'm always look I'm always looking for things I can reuse. So I thought, well, because and the reason for that is our plasterers will make a mold and it's easier to do what we, we say we cut and shut the mold. So rather than make another mold, a new mold, we'll, we'll think, well, maybe we could use that profile or that mold or whatever. So if you see this shape here, it's kind of an S bend. Um, I thought, well, if I nick that out of there, then maybe we can, we can do something with that and we can cut and shut the mold to fit. So that is basically what you see here. This is the shape. Um, and this is how I achieved it. So I was finding the center point uh, and we'll just flip that round 90 degrees. Oh, no, 180, sorry. And that gives us a path and then we can just do the follow me on that. And that gives us our Next. shape and we can turn that into a component and we'll start playing around with that. Uh, and seeing what we can do with it. So once the profile, uh, once we've done the path of the profile, and then basically all I've done there is I found the center point uh, through that and I flipped it on the center. So that gives us the two um, components together. And we're starting to get a, a, an idea of a shape now. Uh, and the mirror tool actually is brilliant for this. If you, if anyone, so as long as you know where your center is, I always, I always use datum points, put mm -hmm. them on their own tag so I can turn them on and off. So I know where the centers of everything is. But if you, um, if you use the mirror, Oh, hang on. I'll just mirror that across. And then you, you know, you've got that. And then basically I'll then start looking at duplicating it moving it around, find another center and I'll start playing with it and thinking, right, well, if I've got this shape now, I'm quite, I quite like that shape and I know that the center is there. So we can sort of have a little, a little play with copying and arraying something. So like 90 degrees and you start getting a shape and you start thinking, okay, well that's, you know, that could work, but I don't commit to, um, making anything solid just yet i'm sort of still thinking about how i'm going to uh use the component so i might now take this away and do several versions that i'll show the designer and the designer will come back and say i actually you know that they, they, they'll, they'll pick one or two and they'll say can you can you work them up a bit more and that's when you get into thinking right so i'll make these solid now and basically all, all i've done there um is because these are solid i always work in solids as well when at any time i create anything i always make sure in the entity info that it's solid because boolean operations are sort of the bread and butter of what i can do what i'd like to do um and if you're if you find that you whatever you've modeled isn't solid for any reason there's a great extension uh cleanup um which will generally make it clean or if you, if you uh if it still isn't solid you can use solid inspector which are all uh, great uh, plugins that I use. So I'll, I'll basically, I'll go in here one at a time and I'll just, uh, do well outer shell. I'll just let that run very quickly. I think I'll take about 10 seconds. Um, there you go. And then you have to do a little bit of cleanup sometimes, but generally we end up with a nice solid component again. And at this point, uh, where am I? One, two, three, four, five, six. Sorry, I've got a little cheat sheet here. So at this point, <laughs> I've got a solid component. And I can do, you know, I can you can start thinking about like, well, what if we did, you know, what if we copy it both up and down? And, you know. You might also, you know, you might see that and you go, oh, actually, I can use that in a freeze as well, which is quite good. And we'll just use the protractor and we'll copy that on the 45 times three. And you start getting like some really gnarly shapes and you think, okay, cool. That's probably that a bit too That looks awesome. <laughs> but, you know. That'll take a lot of cleanup through there, but you know you, you just have to test it out. And that's the great thing about SketchUp and, and components—you can just have a have a little play 
and just see what you know what you're going to get and then singularly uh, let's try you know and it starts then you start thinking oh it's looking a bit like a flower or and that was the great thing in maleficent everything had to be sort of um uh, the natural world uh, with the Fey. So we were looking at patterns and shapes that could be construed as uh, organic shapes. And the, the rose window idea was another reason why we did that. So the aperture of the window was another factor because once we knew the size of the window, I think it was a five foot diameter, uh, five foot radius. Um, then we can sort of work out how busy the window is going to be, how big it needs to be. And we'll use a Boolean operation to cut that away from the solid. So if I use subtract, and we know that's in the center as well. So, yep. It, I just wanted to comment too, because I'm a big fan of physical geometry to locate things like the middle of my model. So I like your little, <laughs> your little X out there. Yeah, uh, well, mm -hmm. I'll show you where the center uh, window is. <laughs> well, I normally put a little, um, I'll show you what I normally do, which is quite sad. <laughs> <laughs> I'll basically, I'll, I'll do a, hang on, let's explode that. That works. I got no, I got no problem with oh. that. Yeah. What have I done? Oh, oh. front I do. Sorry, hang on a minute. It's all gone peak tong. Sorry, I, I derailed you. I was, that's on me. No, no, that's fine. <laughs> so anyway, I would, I'd normally put a little, uh, you know, a little black and white datum so I can see them. Oh, right, right. And it just it just helps me to to locate the centers of things. And I, if you put them on a tag on a layer, you could switch them off, mm -hmm. you know, like uh, sure. they, they, it works great for anything that's kind of like on a gimbal and that has many different points of axis, axis points. Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. I would generally do that. But anyway, the Boolean operation, we've cut away the shape. So now we know that that's going to work in a circular array. And that's us. We've just basically, I've just basically done the array. And I'm happy with that as a shape. So I would be thinking to myself, I'll just show you how I did this actually. So I'd start with that. And then I think it was on the 45. Well, so cool. You know, that just seems a little too easy. I feel like you, uh... right? <laughs> <laughs> but the, the tricky thing with this is when you start intersecting all of these points and trying to get, trying to clean this up, that can be tricky. So I would say whenever you're using, whenever you're doing a huge circle like this, always use 360 sides. I know that sounds mental, but um, at least then for every degree, you can cut through at a point. If you know what I mean, because you know you've got 360 sides, so you're you're never in the middle of of a line on your right. circle. You're always going through a point, um, mm -hmm. so that always help helps me, uh, you know. So that gives us anyway, I'm going off the point. So Very that cool. that gives us our our shape, and then I would do basically I'd go around an outer shell, the whole thing again. So one at a time, making them solid. And then that gives us this, which is a nice solid piece of geometry. Uh, you can see there, it's one, all one one piece. And the great thing about that as well is because it's a solid model, it's a solid group at the moment, I can put a pane of glass through there, you know, just a, just mm -hmm. a, 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 a pane of glass with a bit of thickness. And I can use that then to cut away from the glass and that gives me all my individual pieces of glass. So, it's just a little trick thing. I, I Boolean operations and solid modeling is like key to everything I do because it, it just speeds everything up. And at this point, I'd be thinking we were going to have lots of these windows in the model and on the set. We only ended up having one, but at the time, I'd have thought to myself, well, that's quite a big chunk of geometry and I can get that down even smaller in time in terms of the, its file size by using a com turning it into an even smaller component. And the way to do that is with more of a Boolean operation. So I would find the um, uh, the point where, you know, the mirror line, if you like, where it, um, I can't think of the word, what is it called? Uh, 
uh, the uh, the yeah the center basically the center going through the center mm -hmm. at forty five degrees will give me um, a, a, a mirror line that that I can array around. So you, this will make sense in a second. <laughs> okay, so I got gotcha. you. I got where you're going with that. Yeah, 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 yeah of course you do. Right, and then uh, so I'd use the, fir the first shape to cut away, and then that leaves me with this. And then the second Boolean operation, I, I cut away again, and that leaves me with this. And so we go into this model now, and we can delete all the extern ex extra um, geometry. And that gives us a nice um, single group, which we're then going to explode. And the reason I explode everything is when you do operations, Boolean operations and things, it can sometimes leave a little bit of um, unwanted geometry. So I'll go down to clean up. I'll just clean with last settings. That should give me a little. So it's just purged a few bits and pieces. And, that, and it just tells me that that's a nice, clean piece of geometry. And I'll make that a component. You can name it if you want to. But um, for the purposes of this, it doesn't really matter. And then we've got our center point as well. So again, we can just array that around times four no, times five and there we have our model but now we have the only problem is we've got this line down all of the centers and a one way to um a little cheat that i do with a lot of my components is hiding edges so where they meet so you don't you don't want to see where things are meeting certainly on a drawing because it can be confusing for the the people draw, uh, uh, building it, they say, what's that line there? Is that like a shadow line or something? So if I just go in here and just hide, all I'm doing is just right clicking, hide the edges. And when I come out, that's gone. And mm -hmm. you know, it's one piece of, uh, of geometry. So then we can use, you know, if I want to put this then into a wall, um, very quickly, just to get an idea. I do cop I cop it. make make a copy of it of, of the outside uh, thing. Make that a group, and just cut that away, and then just do edit, paste in place because I made a copy. Go into there get rid of that and awesome. it's sat in the wall I'm gonna stick some uh, shadows on it and uh, get rid of our center there you go absolutely awesome that mm -hmm. is so cool I think so we should have a lot of sound effects right now <laughs> agreed no he's on strike oh <laughs> he's not here he's not I'll clap, I'll clap for you there we go <laughs> Okay. Very, very yeah, so that's, cool. that's it really. Um, I mean, I always say to the, the juniors and, th and things, that, the guys that come through and, and are using SketchUp in their work, because, you know, there are other 3D programs that people use, but um, SketchUp is getting more prevalent in the film industry now um, because just because of its ease of use and it's, it's so quick and easy to, you know, I mean, obviously I pre-planned this, but that really wouldn't have taken, I mean, the pre-planning of this took me, 20 minutes half an hour to do this you know so it, it's not um it's such a quick way of, of of using components to get to a point where you know it doesn't look like a sketch it looks like a final thing and people go oh my god that looks amazing you know and you start casting shadows on the thing if you um if you change the uh the color just give it a little bit of a i always like to go sort of a gray scale on my models because it just gives it a little bit details. more graphic pop that's great um and there you go and you've got all these lovely indents so the plaster is lovely for this because it gives them a chance to show off their, their plastering skills for sure. and i can give that to them as a template as well so i can take this down to the to the plaster shop lay this out full size in on a layout uh you know in in layout on a layout page give it to them full size and they'll, the, the sculptors will well, depending on what how they want to build it, either the sculptors will sculpt it or the the plasters will run it. Um, uh, the, what's called spinning, the the mold, and um, they'll do it exactly like this. They'll make it. They'll make that. They'll repeat it around. You know, they'll make a mold. They'll cast it. 
and repeat it and then make and then that's it it's done bit of sand in the mold that gives us the uh the the sort of pitted stone effect um and then i've just got a few photos to show you have i got time aaron to show you the photos? um actually we only have eight minutes left okay. we still want to get your i know there's more we want to show no um, that's all right that's fine <laughs> So, but we do have to wrap up in a couple of minutes and we want to give people time to answer your trivia question. Yeah, no, definitely. Shall I Good close? Shall I come back to? Yeah, go ahead and close that. And then uh, Tori and I will come back up here. Yeah. It's so, hard to uh, cut you off because it is. It's... I want to see all of it. Oh, well, and, and uh, Luke has that kind of work where you look at it and you're like, man, look at all that detail. And then to see him just in like 10 minutes go from like, a, a single follow me path to all that detail. It's, it's, it is very cool. It's very inspiring to, to get to watch. Well, thank but you now, much. right now, now we have uh, an opportunity for our viewers to become more like Luke by getting your, your kit bash kit and getting your class. And we're going to do that. You can also, um, I've, just as an aside, I've added, so that little model there of the Rose window, that's also on my gum road. So if anyone, if anyone wants to download that and have a play with it and whatever, then you can as well. Watch, awesome. back, watch this back when it gets uploaded and follow along and work out how to do it. It's all there in the, in the model. So, yeah. Cool. That's great. Well, what, right. uh, what is your trivia question, Luke? What should they have been listening for? My trivia question is, it's a bit of a trick question, but when did I first start using SketchUp? First time. All right. Oh, that was pretty quick. Oh. It looks like somebody got it. And well, you did trick a few of them, but <laughs> it looks like Steve Baker the first person with the right answer 2005 2010 was when he started using it full time a couple of you threw that in there but 2005 was the right answer so congratulations steve you are well yeah you are going home with the 10 hour sketchup tutorial as well as his sci-fi kit bash and to claim your prize, send an email to our team at events at sketchup.com with your name and the episode number, and they will get you all set up. Awesome. Well, cool. we do want to have, uh, we want to ask a couple, we had a lot of questions come in. Almost 20 questions came in during presentation, Luke. Um, not because you were doing a good job explaining, but because people want to know more about you. Um, so we're going to ask. I a lot, so I apologize for. Uh... <laughs> no, that's not it. Um, these are good questions. These are the questions we like to see. We'll ask, we do have time for just a couple of questions, but a reminder after this, Luke is going to go live on Instagram. So you'll be able to jump over there and ask him your questions if he does not get a chance to get to yours today. So I do want to go ahead and ask the first one. The most upvoted question was, do you have any tips for a new member going into your industry, but transferring from architecture or interiors? Yeah. So this is the key this is one of the main reasons i did my 10 hour tutorial uh pack is because we have a we do have a skills shortage in the film industry which is unfortunate um there's lots of work around and we are seeing people coming in from art department um, architecture and interior design uh, that's not to say they can't draw but there is a certain uh, nuance to what we do in terms of the artistic side. So it, even though it is uh, plans and elevations like you would see in architecture, you might see on the drawing behind me here, that there's, a, there's certain things that we do in the art department that just give it more of a theatrical uh, look to the drawings. Like we might um, put textures on and, and uh, draw over it to make it, you know, if you're, if you're doing a, a castle or a, a medieval keep or something like that, you can't really do that in AutoCAD without it looking you know machined or whatever so you have to be able to work into these drawings and things so my my tutorial is uh, main reason i put that out is to try and get people who are coming over from other industries to have a look at that and see how we do it and then they can apply the, everything that in there is it's transferable skills so you know you'll have a background you'll know what you'll you'll be able to follow along if that's what you do for a living um but also it just gives you that extra edge 
um, and you'll be able to have a portfolio drawing by the end of it. So you'll be able to, it's a New York loft apartment that we model up in real time. And uh, I show you how to, how to present it as a, as a plan and elevation uh, drawing. So, so that, that would be a good start. That'll work for people who are transferring over from like webinar hosting as well, or is that still Yeah, absolutely. Up? Okay, Mate, okay. I'm yeah. asking for a friend. <laughs> Yeah, somebody, yeah, yeah. Somebody asking knows. for a friend. Happily, and happily. remember, everybody, even though you couldn't all go home with the prize, Luke's also offering that ten pound off discount code if you want to go this week and download that course yourself. Yeah, the code is White Lock Design. So if you go to the uh, checkout and put in White Lock Design, you get that that code. Will give you ten pounds off both both the kit bash and the. Uh, the the ten hour one. So if you're not into one, you might want the other, or you might want both, or whatever. You know, you know, knock yourself out, treat yourself, Go for whatever. It. <laughs> <Awesome>. Treat yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Do we have time for another one? We're we're let's do, let's do one more. One all more. right. We're gonna go a little one over, but question. it's worth it. It is definitely worth it. Uh, let's see here. Oh, this is a good one. Eric asked if. Uh, if and how the move towards using virtual scenery is impacting your work? Uh, not yet. Um, I know that they're using it on Andor, which is the new um, Star Wars uh, series um, over at, uh, they, they shoot that up at Pinewood, just up the road. Um, but certainly for the films that I'm doing at the moment, uh, we, I haven't ever seen that be used yet. So I'm looking forward to it. I think it will impact the Unreal Engine stuff um, real time. I mean, anything that helps me not have to put green screen and blue screen all over the place, because that, that's one of the art directing jobs that I have to oversee and I hate because it's a pain. Uh, but um, Anything that gives us real time lighting and, and uh, you know, shadows and all the rest of it is, is fine by me. I think it will be great. I don't think it will ever take the place of real sets. I mean, they, we had this discussion when I first started in the industry. There was a big discussion about if you remember the, the that groundbreaking, brilliant movie, um, Sky Captain and the World of Tomorrow, which was a Jude Law film. And it was all CG. And everyone's like, this is the end of physical sets. And then the, the film came out and it, everyone was like, oh, no, it's fine. It looks great. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. Yeah. I don't wow. think I've ever seen that, so now I'm gonna have to go look it up. Yeah. Oh, go it's look it up. Yeah, it's well, well worth. It's a fun it. movie, but it's it's uh, it's a green screen movie. You can kind of tell. Oh, yeah. You can tell. Yeah. Yeah. Is it as obvious as our green screen? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yours is better, actually. Oh. Better yeah. We've had years to develop this technology, Tori. Yeah, it's fantastic. I never thought I could say I had one up on Jude Law, but I'll take it. <laughs> Awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Luke. I know we have so many more questions in there. So everybody, please follow Luke over to his Instagram live right after we wrap this episode. Yeah. <laughs> you're you're going to have, it looks like quite a few people following you over. A lot of questions to come. Yeah. But this, this was amazing. I know I no, learned quite a lot. Pleasure. I wish we could do another hour because, uh, you know. Me too. Well, hey. I, I can. Base camp. Base camp. Yeah. 2022, <laughs> Vancouver, Definitely. September. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, sounds good. All right. Well, thank you again, Lou. Well, thank Thanks you very much. Time. I'm going to say bye then. See you over on. Uh... Nope. nope. <laughs> we Get cut out. him off. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, make sure that you follow him on over there. Uh, yeah. Right before we wrap, Aaron and I wanted to take a chance because this is our final episode. And we've enjoyed having you all with us so much. And we have made quite a few jokes in the last couple of months about our uh, production value <laughs> and how, how great these green screens are and the sound effects. But even though you only see the two of us, we actually had quite a big team that has been helping and supporting us as we've been doing this. You have spoken to a lot of them in the chat. Kyle, Allison, Kara, Colin, all members of the SketchUp team that have been answering your questions all season long. We've also had a number of people helping us behind the scenes. We were hoping a couple of them would come up and join us for a second to say hi to all of you. That's right. I know it's easy to just thank, say hi to Tori and me, but we do want to remind you, we said hi to Matt last week. And behind the scenes here, we also <clears throat> have... Uh, 
Well, trust us. Uh, <laughs> both Nick and Aubrey. There's hey, there's Nick. Nick. Nick was running sound today, uh, and Aubrey has been our producer throughout the entire season. So none of this that happens could be done without these guys. So we just want to give them a huge thank you. Yes. Real fast. Thank you for making us look good. Awesome. <gasps> oh, that was great. All right, I am well, time to wrap up. This is up. over. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we it. finally did it. And, you know, in addition to the team that has helped us through this, thank you all for coming back every week and for supporting us and giving your energy to the show. It wouldn't be any fun if we didn't have anybody to present to. So thank you for making this such a great experience. And to all of our presenters, I know that I have learned something each and every week. I mean, I started pretty much as a SketchUp novice. I'm not going to say that I am now a master. That's Aaron's title all the way. But I definitely feel like I've got a little a little bit more oh, <laughs> to I've, throw at it. It was very easy to pick something up each and every week. This has been an amazing time. And uh, at the end of every session, we drop a word of wisdom, kind of sometimes tongue-in-cheek, sometimes, you know, something useful, mostly tongue-in-cheek. But I do want to say... You know, just use SketchUp. It's pretty simple. It Watch videos, uh, hang out on the forums, get to know some people. If you can make it to Basecamp, come to Basecamp because it is an incredible time. It is a way that I have heard nobody say they didn't go away from Basecamp without learning something. It's a great time. and uh, But as I always advocate for, the best way to get better at SketchUp is just use it. So... On behalf of Tori and the entire SketchUp team backing us up, thank you for hanging out with us this season of Fireside Chat, and we hope to see you in real life as soon as possible. Bye, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Right now, head over to Luke's Instagram page and chat with him live. Join us next year in person for SketchUp's premier learning conference, 3D Basecamp. On behalf of all of us here at SketchUp and Trimble, thank you for watching the Fireside Chat series. Oh, that's right. It's Mr. Scoot back again. Your mascot to bid you farewell. And I got to tell you, 3D Base Camp. You haven't been to 3D Base Camp? Get down to 3D Base It's the best 3D conference in the world. Everyone agrees. So... Thank you for watching the Fireside Chat series, and we'll see you down at base camp. See you guys in Vancouver. See you there. Foxy, Scooty, later.